Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Here today we're actually going to be covering a Suichi player after the rework. You know, we haven't seen a whole lot of Suichi, but the character is still really strong and we're hoping to display some of his incredible skills here. Say, how are you doing, Amir? Uh, I am actually doing amazing getting to watch a character with a lot of mobility, a lot of outplay potential. Probably one of the more questionable characters that has uh, been played ever since we have moved over to squads as he's an assassin that really hates being cc'd but every character in the game nearly has cc now so this character is a very hard one to play when you have to fight three other people but getting to see someone at play in a high elo with a lot of mastery over him is uh, gonna be something enjoyable to watch yeah absolutely definitely a big skill expressive type of character now, for people that don't really know how Suichi works, let me just go over a little bit of his kit here for you. First is his passive phony deal. So Suichi earns a stack of phony deal each time he hits an enemy with a skill. And this can stack up to five times. As soon as he hits five stacks though, what this does is that this will actually make his next basic attack deal bonus damage. And a dagger will fall behind his enemy. If Suichi picks up the dagger off the ground he throws it at the nearest enemy dealing extra damage and as we can already see i mean this character is crazily high mobile mobility his q has two parts good faith and bad faith so his good faith he lunges his blade in the targeted direction hitting an enemy reduces its cooldown by three seconds and allows him to use bad faith which uh will have increased range and will leave a dagger on the ground for him Next is W bottom line. Suichi dashes to a target enemy or dagger, dealing damage to all enemies in his path. And if he picks up the dagger on the cooldown uh, of bottom line is reset. So again, just more ways to be able to spam abilities. Next is E risky business. Suichi takes uh, a step back and throws a dagger in front of him, dealing damage to enemies hit. And enemies are marked with risky business. So targets that are marked by risky business uh, take increased damage if they're hit by a dagger. And every time a marked with risky business gets hit, it reduces his cooldown by one second. Lastly is his ultimate ruthlessness. He deals AoE damage around him and tosses four daggers on the ground, which um, allows him to utilize that as his main utility. As we can already see, this character is heavily mobile. And... Uh... Another thing alongside his ult is that it's always the same pattern. So you'll always see it go in the same uh, same directions, one in the top right, one in the bottom left. Um, this allows him to kind of hug a wall, press the ability, and because his W gets reset every time he picks up a dagger, this will instantly spawn a dagger on top of you as your daggers won't really pass over the wall as long as there's a wall there. Um, and it just means that you'll instantly be able to reset this W. Some, so some people like to go and W onto a target that's beside a wall, press your ult, so you instantly get that reset, and then you can start comboing off of there. And in a lot of these fights we've seen, he just places a lot of these daggers around, holds out, tries to make sure that he can dodge something with it alongside dealing damage through people. It, it makes this character look very flashy, very scary to fight, especially when someone knows how to do all of this as he's actually going to be missing his uh his e and q but it doesn't matter because he can just blink onto the daggers for his ult and then just keep catching them his passive stacking up as he's hitting abilities or sorry he's hitting all of these different w's to deal damage and then uh getting a dagger drop on the floor and using it to kill her yeah no it's it is kind of crazy to watch and see what soichi can kind of do when they're when they're stacked up this much with this kind of mobility and i mean as we kind of talked about it with the kit everything about this all plays around his dagger throws and him being able to go and grab and reset constantly just spamming out his abilities if you don't play it wrong and you play everything correctly you do get your abilities back up non-stop now really interesting here he actually opted to early tp to get the wolves here in archery and left his team to take the temple yeah i think that because he solo killed or he killed a solo Razi over in Temple. And I think they also had the vision in Temple that he was just confident that no one else is there. 
he can just go and TP, get the extra early wolves, as they are kind of contested going into that day two, one of the major respawns. Um, so he also got a bit of a little benefit from getting the wolves, and they dropped like a meteorite. He should have slammed to uh, maybe his best piece? Uh, um, or his weapon. I'm not sure which one he's going, if he goes Holy Orders. Oh, he actually- oh, sorry, he got a tree. Climbed into headbeast, and then he's using this Mithril for his weapon. Yeah, most likely the Mithril weapon for on his next upgrade. But yeah, I don't oh, know. I I, I know the- card. oh wow, actually, he went Legs of Steel. I know that, so, like, that you'd want to prioritize the wolves as much as possible, because it is definitely a good farm zone. I mean, it has been for past seasons, so a lot of people sort of have stuck to the try and true of going to archery or to factory wolves right as soon as day two hits. However, it's kind of scary, because if there was another team sneaking about that wasn't on their vision range, they could have potentially just lost an entire objective for it. So a little bit of risk reward. I do think they had control of temple vision, so it wasn't as crazy of a, uh, of a risk. Yeah, some, uh, sometimes you have to be playing this risky style to be able to maximize the amount of gains that you're able to have. So just running over, making sure that you can get, or I guess like just trying to get this tree, trying to get extra farm over in archery. Maybe even, you know, going for a quick TP over to factory as well, seeing if you can get that as well. Just maximize what you're able to do. Snowball, especially for an assassin. Now he's three items, ready to go one shot anyone. As we see, he has the mobility, he has the skill on this character. Walk around and remove people from his sight. And I think this is going to be our weapon up. There we go. We are going at Christmas game. So he should be able to kind of just jump on people. Pretty sure that this is the weapon with Biotic Infusion. So he's going to want to weave the auto attacks in to get this extra damage. And I assume we're... Oh, we're actually TPing over to a huge fight over here. Yeah, I mean, this is a night two, almost full build, Suichi. If I don't see some massacres happening here soon, I'm going to be mind boggled. Yeah, we're going to see him actually go in on this dagger and then just... Go forward, Rio. Or sorry, I don't think Rio gets a chance to play. We barely even comboed her. Hit her with a few daggers, you know. Just showed her our kitchen knife, and she fell on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Sort of got just kind of left to die. As oh my gosh, it looked like the Suichi was going to, but dodges both cubes with the leap, and now he's just trying to wait on his cooldowns. Can he get? He throws the dagger, but no. Fortunately, his team wasn't there to follow up, but. Again, a death that should have been just him dying in no trade ends up still getting the kill on the D and D regardless. Yeah, sadly, I think Shoichi has uh, one of the worst matchups into character, but like the Alonzo or the Nikki, where they can kind of just point at him with a piece of CC, and it doesn't matter what the Shoichi does. If he can't break that chain, then he is going to have. He's just going to be CC'd, and you can't do anything about it. But we also see him running Blink, which is not... I, I don't think it's the common thing for Shoichi's to run, as I'm pretty sure I see Shoichi's playing Nullification, or they're playing uh, False Oath for the extra healing. But he just wants his bonus mobility. We're seeing a lot of the time he Ws onto his target, presses Alt, and then uses the Blink to grab the first dagger to reset his W and combos from there. Yeah, I think, I think he runs the Blink as a safety net. I think that it's it's for those moments where, uh, like you said, if he, if he doesn't get his combo or maybe the an opponent plays around him differently than he expected so he can't get it perfectly, he can use the blink to reset his positioning to guarantee he, he can continue going on a combo. Yeah, and I think we're actually going to see him finish his build soon enough as he has almost enough for a force core, which is, I assume, what his last item is going to be. Usually they go for that dragon scale, giving the armor pen it really helps and he's gonna be taking the blink three for himself he is <laughs> this is a very selfish play style but for a very selfish assassin as well using the alt right beside a wall making sure that we can get that instant reset on our w and he combos from there and it like he just he sees his opponent he knows what he wants to do dashes right on top of them and removes them from the game yeah uh, there there's i don't think any range backline can get away from this suichi at this point basically going to be full build blink three this man if he if he wants you dead you're probably just dying in this lobby at this point yeah and it is very unfortunate for the enemies in his game 
If I'm in here locking in an ADC or a backliner, I'm hoping that my teammate locked in Alonzo and can press E, because otherwise I will fall on the floor. Yeah, actually, I mean, in, in saying that there, what do you think would be the best opportunity for a player to be able to try and uh, handle a Suichi type of character like this in this situation? Um, I don't think that there is a good opportunity for anyone. Um, like, we have a lot of point-and-click CC in the game. Um, we have someone, we have one team playing the Darko, we have one team playing the Alonzo, but it's, uh, it's probably not going to be enough, as I think our Shuichi actually will instantly combo once that CC is done, or before the Alonzo point can finish, as we're going to see him get CC'd here, and then instantly jumping into the Arta, into the Arta cube, and then jumping right back out because he knows that he's able to get in and out before he gets one tick of that art up cube. Yeah, I mean, I think we just saw it there, though, is that, like, trying to CC him and then kill him before the CC's over. But the second that they weren't able to instant kill him, that mobility is crazy. And to think, like, Arda is a character that's super weak against Suichi. Suichi just kind of rolls over Arda. The only thing you can do is you can kind of hope to provide some aerial denial in prediction that the Suichi messes up and steps on him. But the mobility that Suichi has, he can always just get away from your, your box and cube. So a lot of times you're sort of just trying to put CC on top of yourself or an area that you don't want the Suichi to ever get to. Yeah, and sadly our lead island will be falling again as we kind of random TP'd into the zone. So that means that our force core will be delayed, but still four items, day three. Should be good. Um, last fight that we took, Sadly, we weren't able to find our way onto their carries as the Hyunwoo did get that one done. But I think that's how every team needs to be taking these fights. Just look at the Shoichi, deny him, and then kill someone on his team. Yeah, now, obviously, from what we're seeing, the Suichi is definitely the biggest threat. We have to get rid of the Suichi. But in, in reality, I mean, sure, the Lee Dai Lin and Alex don't have as many items, but if you, unless you know these players... The Lee Dai Lin and Alex are still really scary threats, so I think that also helps mask the Suichi in in a lot of these fights. Yeah, and he, as he just used, he has the dagger skills. He doesn't always have to be the first one that's seen, or the first one that's seen as the biggest threat. And I wonder if he actually will slam the Pharaoh's artifact for his piece, as we didn't really get our force core having to double buy our Lee Dai Lin back. Um, and we do still have the mithril on us there's a chance we go for it yeah it looks like he's looking for that piano wire yep there it is yeah with uh pharaoh's artifact giving us a lot of amp still in really nice or, or really nice pickup as well as we have holy orders to boost the amp that we're getting from it because of our percent amp from holy orders yeah so it's a 877 it looks like right now for stats really really well that's a that's gonna be a ton of damage coming out yeah, and, and we're this, probably gonna this jump is up the second strat right there. Is that, uh, this team here, this Arda Han Wu team, seems to be the uh, team attempting to do the anti Suichi. Uh, you know, waiting in bushes, trying to catch, trying to play the, the, the cheesy strat. That, that's the best way. But, I mean, the second that Suichi gets a good angle, I think it's just over for them. Yeah, Hyun Wu now has no E, so I assume we're going to see him try and go in here. Just getting into the backline and all over the map, <laughs> removing the two backliners within five seconds. Didn't even really get a chance to do anything as both of them have skill shots they need to throw. Yeah, no, the second it, that is exactly what happened. The moment that Suichi got past that that frontliner, didn't have to worry about getting stunned. It was over. I don't. Again, there's just nothing that those characters can do. They kind of just had to accept their fate. I mean, maybe the ISIL auto attacks them fast enough to win the fight. I think the ISIL was pistol, so. It would be very unfortunate for his team if uh, he wasn't able to auto attack at the time. But wait, was he? Pi oh my God, he, he was pistol. He yeah, won. no, that team had no chance. <laughs> yeah, they have to. They have to start landing skill shots on a target that is dashing every 0.5 seconds. Honestly, I I just put my hands up, hands off keyboard. I I'm not winning this fight. It looks like we will be contesting with. I don't think that uh any team is actually going to be able to try and deal with us as we're really strong almost level 20 already 909 amp 
and I think in the amount of time this Alonzo points at us, we might be able to full combo the Nadine and put her on the floor. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if this if this Alonzo doesn't point at the Suichi and lock him down, I think that team instantly loses. If that oh, Alonzo accidentally eats anything here. else, it's over. Oh, and it's already... It's, if if this Suichi gonna go in here? Oh, I was waiting for it. If he went in there, I think he wins that fight, actually. No Arta box. There was no point from Alonzo. The only thing that can stop him at that point is Magnetic Field, and I think he still just gets past it all. I think he was scared because the other two, I'm not sure, were in his W range. The second one. But he's looking for it now as... Oh, he actually doesn't take the dagger in time. He's unable to find anything onto the backliners right now. But uses the E. Might be able to get something. Uses his ult and now is trying to combo, but it's not able to get out in time. No, the box on the on the dagger. Yeah. Yeah, he might have misclicked back down to the dagger that he was off of. Um, as if he made it to the dagger that was a bit closer to the Arda, it might have been a bit more playable, but it's it's a play that happens you know you can't play every fight perfectly especially on a character like this where your apm has to be through the roof and like most players would make that exact mistake right there i mean if as, not worse. yeah as someone that doesn't play a locked screen i don't i don't understand how someone even does that type of apm i mean watching Watching the Suichi with this kind of camera locked right now it just kind of gets me dizzy just watching it. Like, here it comes. It's just like, quick line? Who cares? I'm going to just nuke your team. And I'm noticing that uh, he actually gets a lot of daggers on the floor very fast, which is something that I don't think a lot of Suichis are really good at. And he's just, you can see, he always has a dagger on the floor, something he can always jump to. And if he doesn't have one on the floor, then he's trying to set it up. If he isn't able to set it up, he's just not taking the fight. Which is, I think, one of the biggest things with Shoichi. And he's actually going to get blood weapon online here as well. Yeah, he just, went, he just got, went into triple blood here. Yeah, I am pretty sure that... Wait, is this quad this... blood? Wait, is this a quad blood build? Oh, oh I... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to give it to the team eventually. But I, I would have really liked to see the opera mask come online. Yeah, honestly, I think you just go the opera mask. I think I think the quad blood Shoichi is always the angle. Obviously, we are the carry. We know we're the carry. We are going to win every fight for our team. Yeah. Obviously, the burgundy upgrade makes sense because it's the purple going into blood. But come on, Turban turning into Opera Mask is just hilarious. I think we're probably going to see him play a lot of the rest of the fights the same way he did that fight where he's going to get a dagger on the floor and then find his angle to full combo onto one person. From there, he's going to start dancing around their frontliner. And it's just because his team is able to play the other fights pretty well. Um, just focusing one person, if not two. But we're actually going to see him get onto the Alonzo. A decent amount of damage still coming out as he just jumps behind while the Alonzo is pressing W. It makes the W completely useless. Yeah, well, the other thing too here is that I really like his his weaving. He, like, he'll jump in, he'll do his combo, he'll take... If it's, if it's double backline, obviously he just kills the backline and it's over. But if it's not double backline, he will absolutely just weave in, assassinate a target, and then get himself out and let, like you mentioned, you know, his teammates take the fight because his teammates are capable of, of throwing hands in these kind of 2v2s or 2v1 duels. And then, like, also the other factor is utilizing this mobility that he has, all these dagger options, to be able to dodge abilities, like blinking past Han Wu so that Han Wu can't hit him when he knows that something's coming and he's able to just use that mobility to help him dodge. Yeah, something I'm also just noticing is his usage of the dagger skill is... It, it's immaculate. He's weaving dagger skill into almost every combo where I'm not even realizing that he ends behind a target and then he ends behind them again after using dagger skill to dodge an ability and just... He's... He's so tanky, not because he actually has tank stats, but because he's just not being hit by anything. Yeah, and actually, that is a really good point, though, the dagger skill aspect, because most times, a lot of people, when it comes to characters like this, love to initiate with dagger skill. They'll press dagger skill, they'll run in, and then they'll start the fight. But this Suishi, I don't... Th I think his dagger skilled forward once, maybe, if, if at all. It's always during the fight or in, like, the middle of combat. 
Yeah, because I know a little thing that a lot of Shuichi players like to do is you can press dagger skill while you're casting ult, as they did increase the ult animation to make it a bit longer. So you use dagger skill and ult so that while you're in the animation, you're invisible, and then you can use dagger skill too during the rest of your combo, getting that extra damage out, getting that backstab. I think we'll probably see something similar here, as I don't think he's going to use dagger skill too much to engage, unless he wants to find his way onto this Martina. She is one of the priority targets. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting fight. I mean, ideally, it's funny enough, I think he can blow up any target, even if he goes on the lead island. I mean, for sure, he's going to want to go on the back line, like you mentioned, you know, the Martina. Probably the least mobile of the team. So we'll have to see how he plays it out and finds the target. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, lead island overextends and he just kills lead island also. Yeah, I think that's what we're seeing right here is he's going to just blow up Lee Dylan's health bar, also getting on Martina, but he actually gets stunned from Martina's E2, but everyone else is just 1 HP already. He's going to try and blow up, as that is usually the right call here to not give the enemy team the bonus health. But even though he was instantly put on the floor, in the amount of time he was able to play the game, everyone's health bars disappeared. And it, it just shows how impactful he is, even in death. Yeah, no, definitely one of those Hail Mary moments where, yeah, he lost the fight, or he he may have lost his battle, but he, he weakened everyone enough that his two teammates are able to just clean up the play, which at the end of the day, that's sometimes all you need to do. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We will catch you in the next one.